Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation. Uh, so I'm Kavi and he's Santosh. In this session, we will discuss about the orthographic reformation that happened in Malayalam with governmental in, in, uh, intervention and the impact of those reforms on the language and the popular culture. Malayalam is a language spoken by about 38 million native speakers, and it is the official language of Kerala, uh, the southernmost state in India. Uh, the language, Malayalam language, is written using Malayalam script. It consists of about a hundred number of basic characters, and with these basic characters, you can form a large number of, in fact, a thousand number of complex conjuncts, which is a very basic nature of this script. And historically, the script used to be written in Vatayrita, uh, and the samples of Vatayrita script is seen on the screen. It dates back to 9th century AD. Uh, Malayalam has a lot of words borrowed from Sanskrit. And in order to write Sanskrit words, uh, what if the script was not sufficient, so various characters were borrowed from Brahmi. The modern Malayalam script we use today is basically inherited from both what if the, as well as Brahmi. In order to understand the requirement of reformation about which we are going to discuss soon, we need to know a bit into the details of the nature of Malayalam script. So the script is basically alpha syllabary or abugida in nature. What you see on the screen is a few basic characters. Uh, the first one is the vowel a. Second one is the consonant pa. The consonant has inherent a present in it. Third one you see is a combination of consonant pa and the vowel sign u. Together they form a single grapheme and you read it pu. And the fourth one is a uh, conjunct. A conjunct is a combination of consonant, uh, a sequence of consonant, consonants joined by a virama sign in between. So what you see on as the fourth one is a conjunct pna. A bit more into the details. Uh, Malayalam has got 18 vowels. You s what you see on top are the independent vowels in Malayalam. Vowels appear as such only at the beginning of words. So how, how do we use vowels in the, in the middle of words or at, towards the end? When not at word beginnings, vowels always appear following a consonant. And when vowels follow a consonant, vowels are not used as such. Instead, they are used as vowel signs. Corresponding to every vowel, there is a vowel sign. and on the chart below, you see the vowel sign corresponding to every vowel. You can note that the first vowel A does not have a corresponding vowel sign. It's because every consonant has the vowel sign A implicit in them. Okay. Now let us see how a consonant ka gets modified on the application of various vowel signs. On applying a vowel sign to a consonant, uh, it, the vowel sign can appear on the, appear to the left, to the right, or on both sides of the consonant, or sometimes it can even modify the shape of base consonant graphing. It's shown in the chart, and we can see a few examples to understand it in detail. So this is the basic consonant ka. When the vowel sign e is added to the consonant, you get a new ligature ki. Here, ka and the vowel sign e remain separated, but uh, it's an exception. There are a lot of situations in which the newly formed ligature exists as a single unit, as you see in this example. Here, the consonant ka is followed by the vowel sign for u, and what you get is a complex grapheme ku. It's a single grapheme obtained from the combination of two different basic characters. And here is another example for ku. That's a geminated form of vowel sign u. And here again, you have a complex graph information. Uh, the vowel sign ru uh, combining with ka to form a 
newly formed ligature or grapheme. Okay, that's all about the vowel signs. And when it comes to a conjunct, conjunct, as I have said earlier, is a combination or a, of a sequence of consonants with virama sign in between. Here is a conjunct formed by uh, combining two cars with the virama sign in between. And we have the three basic uh, characters combined to combining to form a single ligature, ka. And the con uh, conjunct formed can also combine with vowel sign to form a nucleus. That is, conjunct can also uh, have various forms when vowel signs get attached to them. And here is at another example for a, a complex ligature formed with five different characters. The first one is in fact a conjunct with three characters followed by the virama and a consonant resulting in a single ligature. So uh, this complex conjunct formation is a very peculiar characteristic of Malayalam and with all these rules you can get as many as about a thousand number of uh, complex graphemes and this is in fact a chart from a font which shows all these not all but many of these graphemes complex graphemes so all these graphemes were used in writing especially uh, the manuscripts from uh, manuscripts in palm leaves and copper plate inscriptions and when it when printing uh, started to get popular uh, types were cast for most of these graphemes and let us take a walk through the history of printing in Malayalam where these graphemes were used. So this sample what you see on the screen is the first ever book printed in Malayalam. It happened in uh, 1772 but the printing was not done in Kerala in, in India but in Rome. Uh, it's in fact a summary of Bible called Samkshepa Vedartham and uh, in the preface of this book the author has clearly mentioned uh, 1128 types were cast for printing this book. This trend was followed uh, in further years in 1829 first book in Malayalam was printed in Kerala and even that contained all the complex graphemes. Uh, this book from 1845, it's a print using lithographic printing technology, even it contained all the complex graphemes. And yet this book is a geography textbook from 1878, and this also has all the complex graphemes we have seen so far. Uh, even in 1916, the trend continued. Uh, so in 1930, this is the preface of a uh, dictionary in Malayalam. It has all the complex graphemes we have discussed so far. And in 1960, also the trend continued. So, uh, the script characteristics of Malayalam the, and the orthographic variant that existed in Malayalam till 1960s is now called traditional orthography or old orthography because there was a change, governmental intervention to change this orthographic uh, complexity to some extent due to various reasons about which we are going to see soon and Santosh will discuss that. Thank you. Thank you. So we saw that uh, the complex ligatures that is about more than 1000 uh, it posed some difficulties in the early 1960s that time especially for printing. So printing process started um, asking government and to simplify the script because they are facing a lot of difficulties in that time printing. But more than that, a big change in the technology during that time, that is about 1960s, uh, that amplified this request to simplify the script. Uh, that is when typewriters came into the uh, officers and people started using it. So um, this is a picture of a typewriter that started appearing very popular in the in Kerala. So you see that it is same as English typewriter with the same number of keys, but the keys were repurposed for Malayalam. Uh, but how will you represent this many ligatures with the limited number of keys? Okay, so let's have a close look at the keyboard. See, you, you can see that it is the same number of keys 
and um, uh, with the same thing if you type you get something like uh, this kind of malayalam um, which is very difficult to read because there is no ligature formation everything is printed just like what you see in english one after another uh, every basic characters are uh, printed but no ligature formation nothing which is very difficult to read and it is not doing any justice to the aesthetic beauty of malayalam so it was very difficult to read so at that time um to represent this much ligatures 1000 plus ligatures um, everybody started thinking what we can do okay so to to represent it's not possible with the typewriters with the same technology and uh, we know that uh, in some places in the world people reinvented the typewriters to support all this ligatures but for malayalam when this question came like whether we are going to fix the typewriter or are we going to fix the script um the answer was to fix the script okay so during that time government appointed a committee uh, to reduce this 1000 plus ligatures into smaller set and a government order came based on the report by that committee that is on um, 23 march 1971 i'll read some one, one, one or two paragraph in the order so the government order says the question of reducing the unwieldy number of alphabets and signs in malayalam which consume much time and labor in the process of printing and typewriting has been under consideration of government for some time in 1967 government appointed a committee with the shri shurnad p kunyan pillai editor malayalam lexicon as convener to advise them on the question of reformation of malayalam script the committee in its report has made recommendation to reduce 75 percentage of total number of existing characters in printing and typewriting so what happened is based on this recommendation this 1000 plus ligatures were were reduced into 90 ligatures so these are some of the basic characters and uh, some conjunctions and ligatures which is very frequent in the text so it was reduced to just 90 90 90 um, basically 90 graphing units here so you need only 90 graphing units and it was specifically written in the order that you don't need to change the way you write using your pen you can continue with that one and this is only for the typewriters and for the printing technology so what happened after that so here is the uh, traditional orthography you can see in the uh, third column and now the reformed orthography we are going to call as reformed orthography you can see in the last column and I'm going to explain few differences when we reduce this into 90 what happened to this complex ligatures with some examples so we see that um, in the earlier example we saw that the consonant when combined with the vowel sign it will form so when it is separated uh, here also there is no change but in this example in the old orthography we saw that um the resulting ligature was a single grapheme now it is written separately one after another so this is the reformed orthography here is another one this is long elongated u sign and it is also written separately without no uh, ligature formation here is another one written separately so he- here is a conjunct by forming uh, consonant plus vidama plus consonant this is a single grapheme in new orthography as well because i said this can cons- this grapheme has lot of frequency in malayalam words so it is kept as such but that's not the case when it is combined with a vowel sign it is separated it's not it's not no, no longer forming a single grapheme it's written separately and we saw an example where five basic characters forming a single grapheme here it is written completely separately it's um, it's not forming a single ligature no more so this is this is what happened but when when i said you should not change your handwriting or you, the way you you spend people continue to use the old orthography and only in the printing and typewriters this new reformed or simplified orthography came into existence now we will see how people adopted this order how they reacted with some illustrations from the older samples to the nowadays samples okay so this is 1988 textbook so textbooks started appearing with the reformed orthography at the same time movie posters were these uh, titles and the uh, text were written using calligraphic approach uh, which is not printed they continued using the old orthography so that's one example so we see that the same 
around the same time same time textbooks are using one pattern and the movie posters and people are writing in a different pattern so that means when when some teacher is teaching in a classroom teacher might write in old orthography in the blackboard but at the same time the textbooks may be in in new orthography so that conflict started appearing around in, um, 90s computers started appearing but the same problem was there but not limited by the number of keys but by limited by the number of code points in the ascii layout okay so with that uh, that many code points like 256 how much characters of this whole, whole ligatures can be represented a, a few more than the computer keyboard so uh, with this technique in the initial days there were some tricks to use malayalam that is basically to use the ascii code point um modifying the drawing of a glyph in a font you will use another thing and you, when you type a you will get the picture of the malayalam that's how the old fonts were formed and you had this limitation that you cannot go beyond 256 and if you include english also you are limited with that one so people thought that okay this is the end of the old orthography or anything because even computers cannot handle this right with this many characters so um we, everybody thought that new orthography is the language for the type um, computers as well so um not everybody but there was a, a, com a community of people named rajana achrevedi they started to think and look at how other scripts in the world approach this problem because um it's not uh, it doesn't make sense that everybody using this simplified script for the computers right so during that time they did another trick so what they did is uh, they combined six ascii fonts and a special editor um, so that this 1100 ligatures can be represented the, depending on what you type a separate a one, one out of the six fonts will be selected by that editor and then you can represent the whole malayalam ligatures with that one with the same trick okay and that font was named as rajana font it had the same 101 1128 glyphs that was originally present when first printing in malayala happened in rome by clement pianis in 1772 so it was a proof that no it's not the end of the world you can represent traditional orthography using computers but this was a trick but the trick vanished when in 2001 unicode came into existence so this is one important change in the history of malayalam so what unicode did is unicode encoded the basic characters of malayalam it didn't encode bit uh, this complex ligatures only basic characters uh, like for every script and the orthography difference whether it is traditional or new it is left to the typographers so if you are designing a type typeface you can write the open type rules or at that time it was all buggy and it was not ready but you can write all these rules inside your typeface either to create the traditional 1000 plus ligatures or with the simplified one inside the typeface but the data remains same the only the basic characters are there in the data okay so this was a big boon to the whole um, orthography of the malayalam and soon the six ascii font trick was no longer needed and immediately that font was converted into uh unicode font and computers started using this new i mean uh, old orthography fonts started appearing in computers so um one thing that uh, one thing to note that at that time is like operating system vendors uh it is very difficult to create a font with like 1000 ligatures right especially when it is manufactured in western world and not in natively because you need a lot of script grammar knowledge to uh develop this font so operating system vendors mainly uh came with the fonts that use reformed orthography at the same time free software community started very popular in kerala um and it was very popular among the uh, in teaching community academic community and the techies and these people were also um uh, i mean they, they are all from the kerala they know the language very well they started developing fonts that is traditional orthography so one is this rajana font i said mentioned and immediately another font one font anjali old became and people preferred these fonts instead of the default fonts that is coming from the operating systems so in continuation with this free software community 
another um, a bigger software free software community uh, started uh, you know very active that is southern malayalam commu computing and uh, from which we both are coming uh, we developed more phones traditional orthography phones during from 2005 to till date and all of them are traditional script traditional orthography phones and all of them are bundled or packaged with the gnu linux distributions um, there is a reason why i'm saying that because i said um, free software community is very popular in kerala and government adopted free software standards and uh, the it education or computer education in schools everywhere using the linux so that means when a student see the computers the malayalam in it is like a traditional orthography and the government orders and wherever computers are used by the government agencies they all use this default fonts coming in free software systems and these are all uh, designed and uh, engineered by the free software community at the same time um, fonts included in the operating systems like uh, microsoft apple or uh, google not of science malayalam they continued the simplified with the uh, 200 ligatures at the same time people uh, normally if they are aware of this availability of the fonts they they will immediately switch to the traditional fonts which are available for free um, and it is av available in gnu linux distributions by default okay so now let's see some more examples of the contemporary script usage how it is there so this is a textbook in 2011 um, it is still using the new or new orthography because uh, the typesetting systems the dtp products uh, especially from adobe didn't start the complex script support even by 2011 i think by 2014 only this typesetting support came into adobe products and such complex typesetting systems and when it came everybody started using so in popular culture at the same time people didn't forget the old orthography because they continue to write using pen and that's old orthography and this is a movie poster that is from 2017 and it uses uh, traditional orthography and sometimes since it is in school it is taught the new orthography but when you write it is using the old orthography so there is a mix up sometimes people often confuse us which one is what and it has so this title has mix up both here is another movie poster from 2017 so the, the reason i'm saying movie poster is like it's kind of a um, you know indicator of uh, the popular culture how people are using right so this is also mixer orthography it can it has old orthography here is a movie poster this is completely uh, traditional orthography by the way the font you see uh, that is designed myself i mean i'm a typeface designer as well here is another uh, example this is a children's magazine which started to print the children's magazine using the traditional orthography in 2017 they switched to the traditional orthography here is a uh, newspaper um, that's used the traditional orthography that started in 2017 um, the, in 2017 and 2018 by this time um, all the dtp packages and applications started supporting complex ligatures and uh, unicode that's why it, Uh, you see this um, traditional fonts here is a government uh, document basically this is for the public distrib uh, you know distribution ration card it also used the traditional orthography now this is a internet meme uh, that uses the traditional orthography fonts that's in 2017 here is a, an illustrated magazine from 2017 it's an editorial it says that we are coming back to the traditional orthography and they started printing using traditional orthography here is a um, graffiti i mean it's it's from a college it also uses the traditional orthography that's from also from the 2017 few months back so in all in all technology the basically the typewriters that caused this change and when technology improved it also provided a solution to coming back at the same time people who are not using the advanced technology that's using pen they continued with the traditional orthography at the back end so that's basically what happened to the orthographic reformation so we see the trend that we are coming back to the um, old orthography and to the beauty of the malayalam and i have few samples of the books that is now available in market like uh, text, uh, this is like magazines this is like a children magazine this is a government um, book all printed using traditional orthography 
in 2018. Thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, are there any questions, any comments? Oh, Mark Dust. Yeah. Now, my collection is that Malayalam was in Unicode from the start, and that was, it was probably around uh, uh, 1994, 1995 or so, that uh, didn't know that it was already in Unicode. So, uh, why did you put the date 2001 there? My understanding is that the old index scripts that is proposed by Indian government that came into existence by the time of 2001, but I'm happy to check again. That's my recollection. So um, the first question is how, how many ligatures uh, students are taught in schools? That is around 200 and less. Um, more than the 90 ligatures came from the government reformation because um, government reformation, nobody accepted as such because they added some their own things because it seems that's appropriate. So around 200 are taught. But when, when a student steps outside the classroom, what they see is the old orthography because that's what written in the government boards, graffitis, when people write on the using pen, everything is using that. So there is a um, tendency that they learn unofficially or by just uh, watching these things. And uh, even myself, I didn't learn the traditional orthography, but I designed two traditional orthography fonts now. So everybody knows traditional orthography, uh, not by official means, but uh, in coming months, government is starting, start, going to start teaching this traditional orthography in schools because now it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you had another question that's about how it compares with the other Dravidian languages. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the number of ligatures is, uh, I think Malayalam has the most, uh, more number of ligatures. Tamil had a simplification of orthography uh, earlier, uh, about 1950s, and which was a very successful reformation where all complex ligatures were simplified into small, very simplified ligatures. Uh, 256 is the uh, number of ligatures that is possible in Tamil, so it didn't face this problem. And people adopted it wholeheartedly, so there is no going back there. <laughs> Two questions here. Yeah. Uh, no. At the same time, government issued an order that all the government orders and uh, this um, printing should be using these fonts. I can hear you, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, and not in mechanical printing, but I'm familiar with the artist using that kind of writing to uh, create kind of images. But mostly it's artistic and uh, 
not very common, but it is there. So, one last question, Yanis, uh, and then we have to continue. Yes. Well, you presented the situation as if the language had a nasty cold and it took some antibiotics and now it's okay, <laughs> which is nice, which is fine. But uh, has there been no political connotation with the reform or the return to the traditional reform? Uh, the uh, Regina Chirivedi that I said, that is 1998, they started that uh, six phone hack. That's mostly, you can say, like a political, linguistic, political movement. Um, that uh, technology was not only the um, answer they gave, they campaigned for the old orthography, and they campaigned for the returning of aesthetic quality of the script. And uh, so it was semi-political, semi-technical movement. Okay. So thank you once more. Thank you. <laughs>